So I'm gonna get our little, oh, is that, that's a little situation. Our light is a little bit possessed, but we rockin' and rollin' anyway. And take one. Hold on, this thing needs a little oil, to be honest. Okay, we ready? Hi everybody, I'm Sophia Rowe, and today we're gonna make my recipe from the December issue of Bon Appetit. It is a curried cauliflower rice. I came up with this recipe because my partner is pre-diabetic and he can't have any grains. Also, a lot of requests from friends, families, people on the internet for our cauliflower rice recipes. But here's it all that aside, blah, blah, blah. Best thing about this, so accessible. All you need is literally a cauliflower. Like, isn't this amazing? Just one cauliflower. I guess regular rice is only one ingredient too. But okay, but hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. This is really, really simple, okay? Today we're working with some curry powder, some turmeric. We're giving this a lot of good aromatic stuff because it can take it, it can handle it. All right, so first thing, you can do this with any color cauliflower. Today we're using white, but if you wanna use purple, if you wanna use red cauliflower, I, there's a million different kinds of cauliflower out there. Whatever you find works perfect. You do wanna make sure that you cut off the, the leaves. You can save these for some stock. You definitely don't have to throw them out. You can absolutely save them. I like to just cut, just cut right through the center. Here's the deal. Normally, you see a situation where this is cut out and we just take this whole thing out. Honestly, we're gonna eat it because it's perfectly good to eat. We're just gonna cut off the kind of like yucky stuff at the bottom. That's the only thing. We definitely don't want that. But otherwise, we're good. This is a really great food waste situation too. You've got a cauliflower that's like, I've seen better days. This is just not as gorgeous as it was. Make rice out of it. So we're gonna cut this. We're gonna get pretty small. Now, I sometimes prefer the cheese grater method. Imagine in your mind for me a box grater. Think a box grater. Literally, take the cauliflower, just imagine it and just right up and down the box grater. It's gonna make a mess, but your pieces will be nice and uniform. The smaller you get this at the beginning of the process, the better. That just means your cauliflower is gonna be that much more uniform and that much more riced. Riced? Yeah, that's, I guess that's the word, right? Okay, so we're gonna get in here to our food processor, into the food processor. And if you make a mess, good. That means you're doing it correctly. We're gonna go in and we're gonna pulse. Am I gonna, hold on, wait, how does this go again? Oh wait, wait, sorry. <laughs> there we go. And if you start to see the outsides are really nice, but the inside's still a little big, just go in there and kind of just rearrange the situation station. It's all good. I like to pull some batches. The reason, the more full this is, the more you're likely to have some inconsistencies because the, the more is in there, the more you're gonna, there's just more, just more room for issues. We don't want any issues, you know? We got enough of those. Look at that. Look at that. Now, what we have here, we got ourselves a little dish towel. If you wanna use a paper towel, go ahead. I'm not gonna stop you. So this is gonna catch any extra, wait, hold on, sorry. <laughs> this is gonna catch any extra moisture because cauliflower, Sometimes she comes with a little extra moisture and we love moisture, but when we're doing sauteed, anything sauteed, we want our situation as dry as possible. Now, if we go through this and we see any big chunks, see that? This is another reason why you wanna do this in batches. This guy just didn't make the first cut, but that's all right, we're gonna put him back in. Let's, wait, is it this way? I think it's this way, sorry, oh my gosh, okay. Whoop. You're so nice and fluffy and gorgeous. If you wanted to, am I, is this? Okay. <laughs> you can just freeze for up to six months. Six months, that means you can take this, we're gonna press it, because we just wanna get all the extra moisture out of it. It's not gonna hurt us, but it's just not our favorite thing. You know what I'm saying? Once we've pressed the liquid out, this is when we put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the refrigerator for three days, or we put it in a freezer safe container and put it in our freezer for up to six months. Okay, so let me show you the fluff. Look at this fluffiness. Do you see this? Look at that. It's perfect. It's perfect. Now, like I said, save for later, use it now, freeze it, it's your business. Look at her and all her, right? She's fabulous. We're gonna get into our ingredients. We've got coconut milk, lime, 
a little coconut sugar because a little sweetness. That's how it goes. A little balance, a little acid, a little sweetness. We've got curry powder, coriander, my favorite thing in the universe. Maybe besides cardamom. I don't know. I love coriander. Anyway, we have also got some turmeric, shallot, garlic, red pepper. We've got some pepitas. We're going to actually toast those. And some golden raisins. These are our players. Let's party. So first thing we're going to do while we do our choppy choppy, we're actually going to toast these pepitas. Why are we going to toast them? Because everything's better toasted. When you're toasting any nut or seed, no oil in the pan, dry. Okay, straight there. So we're just going to lay these flat, super low. Watch them because nuts and seeds will burn quickly. You want to keep that flame super low. In the meantime, we're going to choppy choppy. We are going to take our red pepper and we are in no way, shape, or form going to make this look perfect because that just ain't, that's just not my style, right? It's just not, I don't do the perfect stuff. Oh, we got a little, got a little, uh, this is a strange weather here in New York. So we're just going to get in here and fillet our pepper. Now, these little petals, these are for me to eat. Mm. Let's take a look. Mm. So that's doing its thing. We're going to come in and do our shallot. You know what else is good here? Green onion. Mm. Okay, here we go. Look at this. You see how the pepitas kind of puff up a little bit and they get gorgeous and golden brown. You kind of hear them popping. Do you hear them popping? You hear that? That's how you know they're ready. But look how, aren't we, aren't they, I mean, they're so cute. We love them. Okay, so we're gonna get in to the curry situation station. So we're gonna go in medium heat. We're gonna go in olive oil. I don't know how much. What is it like? Two tablespoons, or excuse me. Yeah, yeah. And we're gonna go in first thing with the shallot, right in. Yum, do you hear it? Do you hear the sizzle? Red pepper in, mmm, my snacks, mmm. You notice I do garlic last, why? Everybody in the world has told you, what burns really fast? Oh, garlic, it loves to burn. We're just gonna microplane this garlic in. I mean, a microplane might be my favorite kitchen tool. Gosh, look at that. See that? Over. We didn't have to stress ourselves or our cutting boards out with garlicky fingers. No offense, I love a garlicky finger, but like, you know what I'm saying. It's like, I do however think that you should have a cutting board that is only for onions and garlic. I know you're thinking, Soph, really? Really, you really should, okay? Because there's nothing worse than chopping into a gorgeous apple and then taking a bite of it and it tastes like garlic. It's happened to you, I know it has, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry that you did that to yourself. Beautiful. Delicious, a little salt as we go, because that's how it goes, a little salt train. Now we're gonna get in with our spices. Okay, so we're going in with the curry powder. We're going in with coriander. Oh, the smell, insane, so good. Oh my God, so good. So we're gonna have some turmeric in here. Now in terms of, of uh, curry, that's your preference, baby. Whatever you like, you like red, go red. You like yellow, go yellow whatever you want. We're gonna let this do its thing here. You want it to look almost like it's getting a little dry. That's good. That's a good thing. Now I am going in here with coconut milk. Coconut milk is truly a gift from God. Um, but uh, whatever you want, okay? Whatever you want. I love the coconut milk. So you don't want this to come to a rolling boil. We really want it to be just like a low simmer. We're gonna add coconut sugar because sweetness, balance. We're also gonna add the lime. We're gonna do juice and the zest. Here's the deal on measurements, not my favorite. In fact, a lot of chefs will tell you that they cannot stand having to sit and write a physical recipe because it's just really not how we cook. It's a lot more intuitive. So taste as you go. Uh, you know, I love a half a lime squeeze. You might like a whole lime squeeze, but in the issue, you'll see the exact measurements I use. But I always like to err on like, adjust your seasoning for taste. We're also gonna top this with some herbs, some mint, some cilantro. So we're gonna get the lime in there. So what I like to do, if I'm having a hard time with citrus, you know, the whole like Ina Garten teaches you, like you gotta roll the lime to get the juice out. No, here, go in with a fork. See that, so easy and it's just gonna get all the juice out. We're going in with the cauliflower rice. Are you ready? Are you ready? Oh my God, I'm kinda nervous. Like I, ooh, like, ah, oh my God. So we're not gonna use all of this, but you can, you know what? 
Yes, we are. I just decided that we are. So we're going in. Look at our cauliflower mound. Like, whew, look at that mound. This is definitely a space where you want to use full fat coconut milk. It just really helps with the thick texture. I like how kind of thick this is. You see how thick this moment is? This is where we're going to actually turn up the temperature a little bit because you do want to make sure that you're actually cooking the cauliflower, okay? Because remember, your cauliflower is not cooked yet. Now we're also going to add some golden raisins for a little, little sweet, little sweet situation. And when it kind of starts to look like tofu scramble, you know what I'm talking about? When it starts to look like that texture, that's when you know you're on your way. We're also going to go in season. Yum. Now at this point you taste, if you want to add a little bit more sweet stuff, add a little more sweet stuff. Mm. Mm. I think it needs more salt, so I'm gonna add more salt. Here's the thing about cauliflower. It requires some seasoning. Yum, look at this color, stunner. You really want it to soften. Cauliflower rice, you can just leave for a while. This is another reason why this is so accessible. Nothing's gonna happen to this. Keep it on medium heat and let it kind of do its thing for five minutes. Just do its thing. So I've got some herbs here. We've got some cilantro, my fave. So we're gonna go in, we're gonna chop. Now, we don't want big old things like this in there, but a little stem, like something like this, this little guy, that's fine, that's fine. This is a very yellow moment, which we don't hate, which we love, okay? But I think it's nice when there's bits of green mixed in. The mint, I'm gonna say for the top. Here's the thing about mint. Mint and heat, ugh. The mint sometimes gets a little muddy, gets a little brown, which isn't my favorite. Beautiful. So when you start to see that your cauliflower is kind of like, it's getting, a little to the, it's getting a little stuck there to the bottom, that's how you know it's ready. That's literally it, that's the key. Okay, on to the platter. We're gonna decorate this platter. This is so versatile. We're using pepitas because that's what I like. Time to sprinkle. Look at the sprinkling. Are you seeing the sprinkling? Are you seeing that? A little bit of a little season. Now we're gonna go in with some mint. I just like to just kind of leaf by leaf cut mint. And when we're cutting it, we don't want, we really don't want these stems in there because those don't taste good. But we just like to make sure that our cuts are hard because we do not want to muddle up the mint because it, it literally doesn't taste good. So you just see how, how we've got like nice chunks here. This is exactly what we want for our mint. So we're gonna drizzle with some mint right on top. So now we're gonna go in with a little bit more cilantro. Check her out, look at what we made. I don't know, I was thinking when I was writing this, I'm like, this is too simple, this is too easy. But that's kind of like this light, like it's just what you want sometimes, a party, simple, sudden. The light so suddenly is like this. So, what this needs here is a little bit of a lime squeeze. That's what it's hidden for, yummy. But there we have it, curry cauliflower rice. Yummy, yummy. <laughs> okay, so we've got our beautiful family style platter. I'm gonna make myself a little portion here with a little yogurt on top. We're gonna get some mint on top. The mint mixed with the yogurt, are you kidding? Lovers. Mint and yogurt, they're lovers. They love each other. And when you eat this the way I need you to do it, promise me you'll do it this way, promise me, is that you'll come in with the spoon and you'll mix that yogurt in with the whole situation, with the mint, oh, and then you'll get the bite with the, with the cauliflower and the mint and the yogurt and the red pepper and it's just gonna be so good. Can I take a bite? Mm. Mm. Oh my gosh. Check out the full recipe in the magazine. Please do it. I promise you're gonna love it. This is the curry that you throw together in 15 minutes for your family. Do you know what I'm saying? No grains, hit it with some beans, hit it with any protein, that, whatever protein you like. It's up to you. That's it. I don't know, I'm gonna, I mean, I don't know. That's it. See you later. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>